What's up YouTube, Jason here with Buy My Bits. I would love to use my tripod today to get a little bit better video or stabilization for you, but I'm having kind of issues with that. So this is my old tripod. Last time I tried to use it, this leg right there would not stay. And these do, that one doesn't. It's fully locked, everything. I've had problems with it before, but this is more serious. It actually fell over, took my microphone with it, Microphone slammed into the wall over there, camera went slamming down somewhere about right there, and to be honest, it scared the hell out of me. Thankfully, the camera and the microphone are okay. I did use it to record my last video, uh, but my tripod is pretty much done. I did buy a new tripod, though. Okay, so today I decided that I want to play around with PFSense just a little bit, and I've never actually done that before, so this is not a tutorial whatsoever, and I'm not intending it to be. If you followed my Zeus build video, I did build a new server, you can see that right here, and that is now my main primary Zeus server. Now, because of that, I have an old server that I just, I haven't really used for anything since I've set up Zeus. So I want to kind of repurpose that into like a learning environment for myself, set up PFSense, Obviously, the server is going to be way overpowered for a PFSense router, and I don't want to keep it as that. But I do kind of want to mess around with it and kind of learn a little bit and figure out if this is something that I really want to deploy on a uh, daily basis. So this is Zeus, and I've got a full video on this thing, or a full couple videos, but you can check out out in, in the cards above. But this is my old server, and this has been a great server up until I got Zeus up and running, but now it just sits here, it doesn't do anything. And I do have some basic hard drives in here, I think. These are drives I don't use anymore, some of them like 500 gigs, some of them like a couple terabytes, I think. I don't really use them because I got a couple bad sectors, but that doesn't really matter right now. What matters is that I'm gonna use this as kind of a testing ground, a testing environment uh, to install PFSense into. I have, I don't know if I can see it back there, probably can't see it. Right now it has one main, or I'm sorry, two main gigabit ports on the back, plus four additional that was installed when I was using it regularly. So it's got plenty of ports that I can use, but I really only need two of them. For installation, I'm gonna use a couple of these. Uh, I wanna use one for the boot and the primary installation media, um, and this one for actually like the, the installer itself. Um, I did see that you can you can get it one that's like pre-configured But you don't get as many options or you could install it onto something else and then get the full-fledged PF sense So I just want to make sure that I'm not limiting to myself whenever I do the install so I'm gonna use a couple of these Okay, so the first thing I have to do is download the installer from the website. It's the uh, pfsense.org, I think, or something like that. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, but I'm going to download an installer and use one USB for the installer itself. And then I'm going to plug in another USB into the server, into the back. Sorry, that server into the back. And then I'm going to use that as its boot drive. And I'm going to just kind of see what pfsense has to offer. And I've never done this before, and it may be a wasted journey for me, uh, but I don't want to do an, a, an entire like full network switch, you know, get everything up and running and switch everything over to it, and then maybe have some issues or some downtime or whatever. I mean, I got to make sure that I am comfortable with PFSense before I implement it as a whole and take over my entire network, which I'm sure is not going to be too complicated, but I want to dip my toes in the water first before I go jumping in the deep end. Got it plugged in, hooked up my little mouse and keyboard. Should probably turn that on and give it a quick little power. Let's try that again. There we go. Pretty lights. Pretty. Oh. Uh oh. It's not supposed to sound like that. What the fuck? Ha! Plot twist. Server doesn't work anymore. I don't know. I don't know why. But uh, 
So I booted it up, started making some crazy noise. I'm like, what the fuck? So I turn it off and I turn it back on just to see if it was a fluke, which is weird. And now it's doing this like, well here, maybe you can hear it. Looks like my little PF Sense project is going to come to a uh, standstill for a second. I'm going to take this thing apart and figure out what the hell is wrong with it, and then uh, continue on. All right, so I was getting an error message from here. It was telling me A6, but it wasn't booting at all. Um, now it says A6, but it's booting. It wasn't even getting the bio screen, so uh, I had to clear the CMOS on it and just start over. I'm not really sure why the hell that happened, but now I have this drive. Let me get this plugged in in here. If I can figure out how to plug it in. There you go. I'm thinking I'm just gonna go ahead and just make some quick changes in here and then try to get the installation started. This is bullshit. I hate this. This thing has worked just fine forever. Now I turn it on, I wanna do something with it after a couple months of not using it, and it just freaks out bullshit. It's like it's booting into the PFSense welcome screen. By the way, I know this is a mess. I never uh, never made this look good at all, so it's always been kind of messy inside, but it's okay. It worked for what it needed. Now it's just more of a test bench. In just in case you're curious on what it is, it is an i7-3770K. Um, I think that's a quad-core eight-thread processor. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, and uh, let's see, this is a SATA card, this is a four port NIC, a gigabit NIC, and this is a one port 10 gigabit NIC, because I initially had this connecting directly to um, my computer, so, okay. sat at 5% forever and then just jumped to finish, so that was kind of weird. Um, I think I'm just going to use a standard kernel, and hopefully this doesn't take very long. Alright, so I got it set up, I tried something, I couldn't get it to work, and then I was having some issues with identifying which ports were which. Um, because there's like EM, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then there's an ACL, or I'm sorry, an ALC 0. So I was trying to figure out which one was which. I ended up basically just saying, screw it. I reset everything back because I was screwing around and messed it up. And then I took out the extra cards. So got those laying over there and kept it real simple. And then once I did that, once I got everything real simple, um, when I booted back up, it actually gave me the... Uh, the MAC address for each one, and I was able to reference on the board which the MAC address is, which was which with the MAC address, and then I assigned and labeled those accordingly here um, with some, you know, dry erase markers. So at least now I know this is the LAN, this is the WAN, and I can go in there and kind of mess with it and know which one I'm plugging into. And it likes to beep a lot, that's freaking weird. All right, so fast forward to the next day. I actually ran out of time. Had to put it down, pick it back up today. I got everything up and running. You know, PFSense is installed. I went through and did some basic um, settings, setup or whatever without it hooked up to the internet or my other router. And I got everything up and running, got it looking or working really well. So then I decided to hook it up to my switch so it'd be behind my router and my switch and then run you know, the LAN port to my main PC. Uh, and then of course the WAN port would be hooked up to my switch. And surprisingly enough, even though I, I set up DHCP on the PFSense router, uh, everything worked perfectly. Um, I wasn't really sure if that would conflict. You know, I'm not really a network guru if the DHCP on this server would conflict with, uh, with my Linksys router because my Linksys router does have a static IP address assigned to my MAC address of my uh, main PC. So I was a little nervous to see if those would conflict, but they didn't. Um, so what I did is that, uh, I went into PFSense and 
I changed the settings on the LAN port to not be a static IP anymore, so I want to be on a different uh, IP range. And, you know, basically I just wanted to, I was trying to see if I could do like a pass through. Well, that ended up actually breaking it and I lost connection to the server. So now, now I am on, back on this PC and this is kind of a mess. Um, but I got my little keyboard, got a couple wires running everywhere. Um, this one's going to my switch. This one is going to my main PC. I know they're super long, but that's what I had uh, readily available to me. So got that plugged in up there. So now I'm... <laughs> now I'm back on the on the PFSense router itself, and I'm seeing that the uh, the IP addresses are are all messed up or whatever. So I'm gonna delete. I'm gonna or I'm gonna reset up the LAN port to have a static IP address. I think that all of these problems that I'm having, or I know that all these problems I'm having is because I'm trying to run a router in front of PFSense rather than just being directly. So. I'm pretty sure once I get it deployed, if I do decide to deploy this, uh, I'm not going to have these kind of issues. So, also watching Paul's little stream. Actually, this is Kyle's stream now for Bitwit. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so the next step is once I get this back up and running to where I can connect to it and get to the internet again for my main PC, is I'm just going to kind of explore and see if I can find a couple, you know, quick things to add. Uh, to this, I think a couple, at least the one thing that I want to try out is uh, ad blocking. That's pretty interesting because if I can set up my router to ad block completely um, for any computers behind that or behind the router on my network, that'd be pretty badass. So I want to try that out. Also, I want to look at um, bandwidth monitoring because I literally just got an email today from Cox Communications telling me that they're going to start charging for overages, which by the way, now that that's kind of a thing, I do want to set up some kind of bandwidth monitoring service within my home network uh, to better keep track of that. Yeah, so kind of digging into my ignorance, I went through here and I re or I reattached uh, an IP address to it, and I did not enable the DHCP server. I'm like, well, I don't think that you know I should, but that didn't work. So now I'm going back through and reconfiguring it to hopefully, hopefully work this time. So I got PFSense installed, got the uh, PF Blocker NG, which is the ad block uh, package that you can uh, hook up to PFSense or install into PFSense that allows you to block ads on the root level from all the incoming traffic. And I went through and I did some basic settings. I didn't get it right, so I went to a website, followed the instructions on how to get it set up to properly block ads and pull from the, the list that's generated online. And then I went into the system, into the router, I disabled the blocker, and I went into my browser, disabled my ad block, my uBlock origin that I use, and I went to a few different websites, like news websites, I went to like Fox, CNN. I ran the test, and I did it before and after, with the with it enabled on the server and without it enabled on a server and it did seem to block some of the advertising uh, that came through but it wasn't a 100 percent and it wasn't nearly as good as uBlock origin does when you're blocking it on the browser level because it actually removes the divs or the css properties in there in the website and it, and it kind of restructures the website around where the web where the ads were so it doesn't look as broken uh, whereas with this technology or this plugin what it does is it just blocks the, the image from downloading. So you'll still have the page layout manipulated by where the ad should be, um, but it'll be like a broken image. So it, it's kind of hit or miss. I think once I uh, implement the server, or when I do, or if I do implement the server on a wide scale, I'll definitely use that as kind of like an additive, you know, to my browser as well, and also block some ads if I'm using like Wi-Fi or something like that. Um, but it definitely is not 100% all by itself. And I know this video wasn't specifically geared towards ad block, 
uh, packaging for the PF Sense. It's more of just me playing around with PF Sense. So uh, sorry for that tangent, but that was just something I wanted to test. Now, one thing I did notice that making changes to the interface was really slow. It took a lot of lot of time just to get you know something that I changed to actually save to the server. I'm pretty certain that that's going to be because I'm running it off a slow ass USB 2.0 drive. Uh, I'm guaranteed that's going to be the problem. And uh, I think that once I implement it with an SSD or whatever, it'll be way faster. I hope so. Uh, it better be way faster. But I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it will be. But other than that, everything seems to run pretty smooth. It has some basic options in there that I can go through and mess with. There's some, definitely a lot of advanced options that, you know, I think that in order for me to do it right, once I deploy it full scale, I'll probably just have to look up and make sure I'm doing it right. Um, but it's very interesting, you know, just to have so much power built into a router that I didn't normally have with my little home consumer router. But it's also kind of a downside because the home consumer router is made for, you know, dummy proofing things, you know, just make it really simple to achieve whatever you want to do. Uh, so, you know, it, it's more of a learning curve, but that's what I like to do. So I'm probably going to find a solution, maybe not use such an overpowered server to run this, maybe find maybe like a little eBay find or something like some old school outdated Xeon server or something low power, hopefully and quiet. <laughs> it's got to be quiet. I'll probably look for something like that to turn into a full time PFSense router and not use this uh, machine. Um, but at least now I know kind of what I'm getting into and and hopefully this little vlog style video kind of gets you an idea of you know what I did to get to it and you know what the experience is for the first time user for somebody who doesn't actually know how to use PF sensor has never used it before uh, there's a little few struggles but you know overall it was an interesting experience so if you guys like this video I definitely appreciate you liking it down below make sure you subscribe and as always have a great day